Welcome to the Rotary E-Club of Silicon Valley, where we share stories about education, innovation, and entrepreneurship. Uh, before we get to the presentation session, I'd like to introduce our members on the call, um, and then Roger will introduce our guest. Uh, first, we have Rushton, founder of the Ed nonprofit out at Next Vista, um, based in San Jose, California. And uh, we have Roger, who is the um, estate lawyer out in Kamloops, Canada. Roger, could you uh, introduce uh, Ariel for us? Yes, thank you, Andrew. I am a subscriber to uh, Ariel's uh, guest speaker's uh, YouTube channel, and I have been for about a year and a half now. Every time that my grandchildren come over, what they, what they want to see is the wildlife photography and videos that are posted by Ariel on her channel, because they are uh, really much like um, her content. One of the things that um, each of us does in life is we make choices. Some of us make those choices very deliberately, and some of us make those choices by default. And Ariel is one of those people who has made choices deliberately, such that um, at the age of basically, I think it's 30, she has now semi-retired uh, as in order to be able to do the things that she would like to do in her life. And I would like now to introduce to you, Ariel. Good morning, guys. It's great to be here. Welcome. Good to have you. Good and welcome. Okay. So what I would like to talk about today is um, kind of how I got to this place that Roger just mentioned in my life. I didn't come with um, any special background that got me here, but one of the biggest factors in being able to do what I do right at this moment is that I bought a tiny house. Um, I've been living here full time off grid in the mountains of northern uh, Wyoming for just over three years now. And my tiny house, let me show you a picture here. So my tiny house is situated in a little tiny clearing in the trees, and I just love living here. I bought a tiny house. If you're not familiar with it, it is a, um, a basically a small cabin that's built on a trailer. It's kind of like an RV, but tiny houses are usually stick built, meaning they've got two by fours and they're built like a normal house that's attached to the ground, not just out of aluminum and such like a standard RV. So they are heavier, but they are also mobile. Um, you can't really see the wheels under my house because of all the flowers, but they're, um, you know, it is a build on a trailer that is the foundation. And if I have any kind of, you know, truck that can handle the amount of weight, I could hitch up to it and tow it to somewhere else. But it's also comfortable for living in because it is built like a, a normal house. It's well insulated. It's easy to heat and cool and all of that. Now I bought my tiny house because I live in a gorgeous area that is very popular and housing prices over the years I've lived here have become just kind of insane. I think the median home price sold in the county I lived last year was 3.2 million. And so I am realistically not going to ever in my lifetime buy anything in the area where I live. And even rentals are extremely expensive. I had been sharing a, a rental house with a, a roommate for quite a few years. And when the owner sold it because they were retiring, um, everything else that was available in the area, which is not much, was well over 100% of my income. And that's a problem that's, that's not just unique to me. I have quite a few friends and acquaintances who are working full-time professional jobs, sometimes multiple jobs, and they're living out of their cars or they're living on friends' couches because there simply is no housing here. 
So I was looking at what I could do and initially I thought I could live in a van. I, I think I could do that. I've traveled a lot in vehicles. I love to hike and backpack and so I'm you know com comfortable with and familiar with living in very um, small compact spaces and I thought well I could do that for a while because I, I can't afford any kind of traditional housing here and as I was kind of looking at um, van conversions and such I ran into the idea of a tiny house and thought you know where I live where it snows a lot that would be a lot more comfortable to um, have a, a well insulated dwelling that's not just a, a lightweight shell. So pretty quickly, I moved from thinking that to um, looking for a builder. A lot of people build their tiny houses themselves. I did not because I it was heading into winter here. I'll show you guys some pictures of what that looks like shortly. Um, but I was heading into winter and I was going to be homeless in about two months. And while I think I could probably learn how to build a house, uh, given enough time, I didn't have the time or the skills or the knowledge or the space to do it or any of that. So I was looking for a professional builder. Now there are quite a few out there. There was, there was not very many um, four years ago when I was looking, but now there's quite a few options. So my house was built for me. It was awesome because the builders did a great job. They have a, a plant in Colorado Springs and they started, they sent me pictures along the way. It started out with just a flat trailer. And six days later, I had a completed house that they delivered to my location and I could move in, um, which was wonderful. Then I found a, a really cool kind of work trade place to park. Um, this location where I am is part of a approximately 800 acre ranch. And I do some work for the owners. They let me park my house up here in this little clearing in their woods or nobody was doing anything so I'm not in their way and so far that's been working out great. Now I originally went the tiny house route just so I could stay living in this area where I already was. I, this is where I chose to make my life. I grew up um, back east in Pennsylvania but I moved to Wyoming when I was 20 and it's you know where my jobs are, where my friends are and I just I didn't want to have to leave all of that just because of nowhere to live. So that was my initial reasoning for buying a tiny house, um, just to be able to stay in this location. Now, since then, I just passed my, my third anniversary last month, so I'm into my fourth year of living here. And I have, over those years, realized that this is a decision that has benefited me in many, many other ways. I, um, did get a loan to buy my house. I was able to do that through a local credit union as an RV loan because I didn't have the cash to pay for it all quite up front. But um, that, that was done as a 15 year loan and I could easily make extra payments. And so I've done so. So just over three years in, I'm almost completely paid off on that loan. So that was a worthwhile decision for me financially. I would have, I've got details on my blog and stuff about all the, the financing, but I would have spent the same amount in rent in a little over five years had I continued renting at the current rental rates here. So if I live here for, you know, almost six years and then burn my house down, I'm going to come out one bonfire ahead of if I'd been paying rent that whole time. So the, the cost worked out well for me. But as I've paid down that loan, now my payments are really small, um, almost no interest left because I've, I've got the majority of that paid off. I've realized that that's really freed me up to do other things because of the financial freedom. So this past summer, I was actually able to quit my job. Um, most recently, I've been waiting tables here. It's a, a tourist area and I can be a very busy and, and sometimes profitable job depending on the time of year. But it was not a job I particularly enjoyed. And so just having the low expenses here has allowed me to quit that. And even before I quit, I was actually only officially working three mornings a week. And with uh, my housing expenses now being very, very low, my other monthly bills are extremely low because I do live off grid. So there was some initial investment there, but my power comes from solar panels and all of that. So I don't have ongoing um, electrical bills. I buy a little bit of gasoline and propane for various appliances here. But other than that, my, my monthly bills are just super low. And the things I enjoy doing are not expensive hobbies. Um, I like to hike and backpack and ski and so on. And 
those things just don't take a lot of money once you've got the initial equipment. And so my expenses are so low that I have been able to quit my job and pursue just doing the things I like um, full time. The things that I enjoy, I'll get into in a minute. I'm going to show you around my house here. Um, kind of jump back to what my house is like. This is the interior. It looks like a small cabin. I um, have about 170 square feet plus a sleeping loft and the other end there you're looking at is kind of a storage loft. It's a very comfortable amount of space to me. It's significantly smaller than your average American house for sure, but I really like it. I've got a, a large kitchen. Cooking is one of the things I really enjoy doing, so when I designed my house that was a very important thing for me to still have space for. Got little stairs going up to my loft there. You can see you've got a little dining table that flips in and out um, to, as I need it. You've got a small wood stove. You might be able to hear it crackling beside me here. It's about eight degrees in Fahrenheit outside this morning. Uh, and that is how I keep my house. I've got, like I said, a sleeping loft, which I can sit up in. It's not tall enough to stand up in, but that um, works out fine for me. And just have a beautiful little spot here enjoy sitting on the couch and reading by the fire and that kind of thing. Got lots of storage, lots of cupboards, lots of uh, interesting ways of come up with hang clothing and shoes and such to make space because that, that is a, a small amount of space to keep everything in. But I get to live in a really gorgeous spot so that is totally worth it for me. And that was from a few nights ago. I've got um, I do live in a very rural area, so that was under the full moon. You can still see bright stars. I just, I love the, the place where it get, lets me be able to live. Now, as I mentioned, one of the bigger challenges with where I live in particular is that um, it snows a lot. I live in the mountains of northern Wyoming. It's a little over 6,000 feet in elevation, and it does snow for six to eight or nine months of the year. So there's the majority of time there's snow on the ground, sometimes a little bit, sometimes a lot, and sometimes really a lot. Last winter we had a, a record winter and it was, the snowbanks were well over my head, um, almost well above the eaves of the house actually. But I like snow, I like winter, and um, I've got lots more info about that as well, but I just want to tell people it is certainly possible to live in a tiny house or some other kind of small dwelling in a very cold and very snowy place. Obviously other people have been doing this for a lot of human history, but it does work and I enjoy it. Um, it snows even in summer here at times. There's, there's no day of the year when there's no chance of snow. And I do have solar panels for my power. They're up the hill from my house. That's how I get electricity. I've got a little generator for backup if uh, I get too many snowy days in a row. Um, and as I mentioned, I am off-grid, which doesn't mean I have no connection at all to the outside world. Obviously, I am online right now, but it does mean that all of my um, stuff does not have any physical connection, tie, plumbing, wiring to any off -grid, to any grid power system. Um, I carry my water by hand from a neighboring well and fill my tank and then when I turn my faucet on I have running water. I have a composting toilet so I don't have any kind of septic system. That's uh, something I get a lot of questions about. It's very easy to use, no problem, no smell, it does not stink. I've been in here for years, I'm very happy with it. Um, I do cut my own firewood for my heating, which is a lot of the year with the, all the snow I get here. And I've got this cool little wood stove, which crackles away and keeps me very warm and cozy in here. Staying warm enough is not a problem. One of the things I like to do during the very short summer months is to garden. I, I find everything about food fascinating. I like nutrition. I like cooking. I like growing things. So even though the summers are short and there is certainly a limit to things you can grow, um, no tomatoes, no corn, none of those warmer climate things, um, I do like to grow the veggies that I can. And I have a lot of flowers and herbs around the base of my house, which is why you can't see the trailer. But I, I store and preserve all the food I can. And in the winter, like now when it's snowing outside, I even grow sprouts inside so I can produce as much of my food as possible. 
I do like to cook, as I said. So my kitchen is a, a full half of my house approximately, because that was the most important thing for me to have space for. And, you know, I do can, I freeze, I dehydrate, I cook big meals, I cook for other people. Um, those are just things I, I really enjoy doing and the living in a space this small does not prevent me from doing. So that is, is one of my main hobbies actually. And for other hobbies, I do enjoy skiing. I um, enjoy hiking and backpacking. I live in some gorgeous mountains. That's partly why I wanted to be able to stay in this area. Um, it's just a, a pretty beautiful spot and that's what I enjoy doing. But like I said, those are not hobbies that take a lot of money. So that lets me live this lifestyle that I wanna live. Sometimes I enjoy climbing and things like that um, and sitting on the couch and reading or writing. Um, and then as Roger mentioned, one of my other biggest hobbies that I spend a lot of time on is wildlife photography. That is um, something I really enjoy as well. It's something I'm using to partially support myself right now. I sell photos and um, that gives me the, the limited amount of cash I need to be able to continue my lifestyle because there's always some bills that need paid. So the, the biggest thing in looking at all that that I'd like to encourage people is a lot of people start um, down their lives, I, I guess like he said, with not really making decisions, but just following along with what other people do. There's this standard, you go to school and uh, go to college and get a career, and then when you're old, you retire, and then you can do what you want. And I just um, never really wanted to do all of that. So I've never had a career. I've done a lot of very interesting jobs in my life, everything from milking cows and working on a strawberry patch to um, counseling uh, adjudicated youth and backpacking with them and waiting tables and uh, quite a few things. But what I wanted to do is just things I thought were important and not follow the career path. So there's kind of two ways to be financially free. You can either make a lot of money or you can not have many expenses. And I decided for me that not having many expenses was by far the easiest route to go. And a tiny house has been a huge part of making that happen. And so here I am now where I am, I do still have several part-time odd jobs I do for people. And I, as I said, I sell photos and stuff, but I am pretty free to do what I want. Um, I am in my very early thirties and I hope to be able to maintain that for the rest of my life. Now, I don't think that everyone wants to live in a tiny house. I don't think everyone wants to live off grid. I don't think everyone wants to live somewhere snowy or garden or have the particular hobbies and interests I do. But what I would encourage people is to stop and take a look at your life and think out what is important to you. What do you want to do with your time? What do you think is valuable? And once you find that, what can you change in the rest of your lifestyle to make that more possible instead of just following society's normal plan of this is how everyone does things and maybe spending a lot of your life doing things you don't enjoy. Thank you, Ariel. That was amazing. I, I'm, I'm going to spend the next like two hours gushing about everything you talked about <laughs> with, with my partner. It's that, that's just so cool. <laughs> um, before uh, we, we move into, I'll kick off the Q&A session um, with uh, just a, a quick question of my own. Um, but first off, comments, I, I, like the photographs are gorgeous. Um, there were so many like pictures where I was just like, like my heart aches with yearning because it's, it's just such a cool, it's, it's just so beautiful. Um, Thank you. And uh, the, the, that, that little clearing in, in the woods is, is um, gorgeous. How did you, how did you find where to, where to put your house? Well, that is definitely a challenge for a lot of people with tiny houses. Um, I knew a few friends in this area who had a little bit of land. Um, that's not a lot of people due to the expensiveness of property here. 
Um, so when I first decided I thought this was the route I wanted to go down, I contacted several of them and for one reason or another, they all kind of just didn't work out. And then I was waiting tables at the time and there was a gentleman I knew, but not well at the restaurant. I was just telling him, you know, one day what was going on. And I knew he was a property caretaker for extremely wealthy and the uh, possibility of parking somewhere like that on some, or even asking somebody like that to be able to park there had never occurred to me. And he just said, oh, I'm sure you can park on their place. I mean, I have to check with them. So let me get back to you. And he went and talked to the owners the next day and came back and said, oh yeah, they know who you are. They said, sure, Ariel can come over. And so after trying a bunch of things I thought would be possibilities and nothing working out at all, all of a sudden something this amazing just kind of fell in my lap. <laughs> That's so cool. Question. So um, I want to echo Andrew's thoughts about the, the photos. <laughs> those are those are really really amazing. Thank you for sharing your talent. You know uh, you know with us on that front. Uh, several several financial questions on this. Uh, just three in any particular order uh, that you want to want to work with them. Um, one is you mentioned that the median home price was three point two million dollars in your area, and and so I'm. I'm curious, you know, kind of what the nature of the area is that it would be so very high. Uh, that, that's higher than many places here in Silicon Valley. Um, so, so maybe that. Um, I, I live in the corner of Wyoming that's close to Yellowstone. I found a lot of people in the country don't even know the state of Wyoming exists. I still have friends back in Pennsylvania who say, I can't remember, do you live in Colorado or Montana? I'm like, no, the giant chunk of ground in between, that's where I live. But uh, a lot of people have heard of either Yellowstone or Jackson Hole, and I live rurally outside of those areas, but close to those areas. So there's two major national parks, uh, Grand Teton and Yellowstone. There is, um, I guess, the biggest and most popular ski resort in the lower 48 in the area. And uh, there um, are tax reasons that Wyoming is a desirable state to live in. So there are a lot of very wealthy, wealthy people who maintain uh, resident status here because of that. And it's a gorgeous area. So all of that and the, the land being limited, um, you can't just sprawl and build more because you can't just uh, sprawl out of town and build in a national park. So every, all those things work together to just make it extremely expensive. That makes sense. Okay. The other, the other two together are um, health, healthcare and uh and retirement uh, how, how do you how do you work with it are those things that are kind of worked into your plan as well um as far as retirement i mean i kind of am right now i'm continuing to work on building um various streams of income so i do some odd jobs for people here that require you know my physical presence to show up and i garden for one lady and i clean a house for one lady um that kind of things but i'm also working on expanding the the photo sales and just you know sharing what i do with people and from advertising and stuff that does bring in some income as well so i'm hoping to be able to continue to expand that to being enough of an income because i don't have high expenses to be able to maintain what i'm doing now for the indefinite future okay okay yeah, yeah, yeah. um and and then in, in terms of health like health insurance oh, this is kind of that, that in uh, the political bug bear, right? Find, and it's always in American discussions. I find nutrition and human health extremely fascinating. Uh, what I tell people is that for my health care, I try to uh, take good care of it. And when I have medical expenses, I pay them like any other bill with cash I've earned. Okay, cool. Well, well, thank, thank you for, for sharing, kind of sharing your vision on that. I mean, it sounds like you've, you know, you've managed to Get a, get a lot of happiness in, in, in return for shedding a lot of the uh, things that a lot of other people do. Thank you. You have wonderful pictures. I really enjoy them. And I've, uh, your videos have the same quality, particularly in the wildlife. And I would recommend to all the members that they go on to uh, Fine ETH, and, um, which is your YouTube channel, and watch some of those because they will be quite amazed. However, I'm also aware that fairly recently, you have, pro you have purchased an acreage. And that um, in uh, a couple of years, you wish to move your uh, tiny house onto that acreage. 
And the, uh, I think it's about 11 acres, if I remember correctly. And there's, um, at a, and the elevation is about 4,000 square, uh, 4,000 feet above sea level, which is considerably lower than what it is where you're at right now. And uh, one of the advantages is because if you're interested in particularly gardening and Ruth Stout method of gardening. Um, and, I, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think your new monthly payments on your mortgage are about $200 a month. Um, the, I think, um, go ahead. I was going to say, that's correct. I did buy an acreage, as I just mentioned from the prices here, it is not in this area, even though my initial um, reason for going tiny was to be able to stay here. Everything else that this lifestyle has opened up to me has made me realize that the more I do this, the more I want to do this. And while I certainly live in an absolutely awesome spot right now, I don't own the property and I don't know how long this relationship will work out with the property owners. So at some point I'd like to have my own place, but I don't have over $3 million. So I wasn't going to be in this exact location. So I went looking around the Mountain West for something more affordable and, um, that still had many of the things I enjoy about this area. And like you said, a little lower elevation and um, longer growing season to facilitate growing more of my own food and such. And so I did purchase that. I, my jobs and everything are still here. So I'm not planning to move right at the moment, but whenever I do decide I'm ready to, or if I need to, if something changes with my ability to, to live in this spot, I have a place I'm ready to go. I can hitch up my house and take it with me. The, I really uh, am impressed by the, how you have staged uh, the overall purchases. Because first of all, you, you've taken the first step, which is buying the tiny house. Second is you've taken now the second step, which is buying the acreage. And ultimately down the road, if you wish to, you could also at any point of time is uh, put a house on that acreage if you wanted to, a standard stand home uh, uh, house. One of the things that people don't realize, which only comes with age, and um, uh, the, um, when I was a child, a big house was 800 square feet, and the average sized house was 600 square feet. And whole families would, I can remember one of my friends, he lived in a 600 square foot house. They had seven children. And so uh, I look at the trend which has happened within our society of ever bigger, ever uh, more gorgeous big houses. And I shake my head because here you have uh, so many people with large houses, and there's two people living in it. So I must go ahead, please. I was going to say, yeah, that's something I see. And I don't think that by any means everyone wants to live in the same amount of space I have, though as tall as it seems to most current Ameri as as small as it seems to most current Americans, um, I have more space and a more comfortable dwelling than most human beings who have ever lived on the planet in all of history. So I certainly can't complain about that. But I would encourage people to think about, is, is a big house what you actually want? If you're going to trade your life um, by, it, by having to pay a mortgage, having to pay heating bills, cooling bills, maintenance, uh, you know, mowing your big lawn, fixing this, cleaning that, is that really what you want? Um, if it is, that's fine. But I think a lot of people don't stop and think about, is that what I want to trade my life for, to have this big house? Or is there something else that's more important to me that I would rather spend time doing and have a, a different kind of house or a smaller house or something that took less of my time and resources? The, um, the other thing which I find to be um, uh, amazing about not only the houses, but the, um, I can remember meeting it uh, through one of my clients, one of the richest men in Canada. And he lived in a fairly small house in uh, Vancouver and uh, on a very small lot. And he explained it to me um, 
and I asked him, I said, hold it, you could have the, whatever house you wanted, as big as yard, because he had more than enough money to pay for it. I says, why do you have just uh, the house that you have? And he said, I don't like cutting grass. My wife doesn't like doing housework. <laughs> And we don't like to have hassle of having servants. And so for, my, for our happiness, we have this small house. We only had one child. And uh, we're very happy here. And that uh, has always re remained with me because um, uh, that's the goal, is uh, to be able to be in your life happy with and with the things that you have yeah i i do work for i know we're about out of time but i do work for various very wealthy people here who have huge houses beautiful places and i have no problem with that but i would actually think that as i am in some of those places i would have a problem with jealousy and and looking oh it would be really nice if i had that or really nice if i had this but what i find is that that's not true at all i look at the amount of different people they have hired to take care of stuff i look at the amount of total work they have i look at the the heating bills on the for the owners of this property are somewhere over 10 grand a month in the winter i, I couldn't pay the heating bills on their house in my life you know much less own the place um, and then the stress of, are these people who are working for you doing a good job? Are they ripping you off? Are they taking care of this? Did we forget about that? And I just think, I am so glad I don't have any of that. <laughs> <laughs> I would totally agree. Wonderful. Um, Ariel, thank you so much for your story and your thoughts. Uh, just to close us out. Members, please remember to sign in on the bottom, and uh, members and guests, please leave a question or a comment on the discus. Ariel, do you have any uh, final words for us? Um, my main thing would be that aside from a tiny house or gardening or cooking or backpacking or any of those things, think about what is important to you to do in your life. And then once you figure that out, go backwards from there and figure out what you need to do to make that happen. And think about whether a different housing choice can be part of, of making that work for you. Great. Thank you so much for joining our meeting. See you next week.